Hi, welcome back to Art Class with Miss Teresa. So today we're going to be drawing um, Washington State's flower, which is the rhododendron. And um, we have a bit of a cross breeze going, so if my papers go flying, you gotta give me a second and I'll recoup. Okay, so what I did was I searched the internet for um, drawings of the flower because when I looked at the pictures of the flowers, there were so many bright, vibrant colors. I had a really hard time telling the difference between each flower. And the neat thing about this particular plant is that it has clusters of um, blossoms. So sometimes you'll see like a daisy will have one coming out of its stem. This particular plant, you're going to see lots and lots of little blooms clustered together. And so that's how we're gonna draw it. We're going to start with the easier version. So we're gonna actually start with the petals. And some petals on plants are really short, but these ones tend to be kind of long, almost banana shape like. So we're going to make kind of looks like kind of a carrot. And in the middle of that, we're gonna draw a line. And then we're going to make kind of little Vs. And that shows kind of a bend. And you're gonna go all the way up that line. So I'm still working up the leaf. Okay. So just like for texture of skin, like if you look at your hand, you're gonna have different lines too. Plants are very similar. So to show the edges, I'm gonna make little tiny lines on the sides. Okay, and so what I noticed about this particular plant, it looks like it has five petals, um, but they're kind of formed really close together. So if you wanna make them almost like connecting blobs. So they connect in the middle. And they have these parts that are long and kind of curly in the middle. And so you could either draw them as little circles if they're front facing, or if you'd like, you can draw them um, off to the side where they kind of look like little worms. Yeah. And there's lots and lots of them, so, okay. So here's my first flower. And to show that it has depth and that it's not a flat surface, we're going to make some lines coming out of the middle. And I've noticed these flowers before um, in people's yards and also at uh, Point Defiance, they have an entire garden that have all sorts of varieties of these flowers. And so they don't just come in one color, which I thought was kind of neat. And sometimes I go walking there or bike riding. Sometimes you'll see animals like raccoons. Um, raccoons are great wildlife. You really shouldn't feed them because um, they have the skills to get their own food and they become really dependent on people feeding them and so they kind of lose 
some of that natural ability. So they're fun to look at, but they don't really need people food. Okay, so there's my first flower. So I'm just going to keep on making them over. So this is going to be my front flower, but remember that they have um, five petals. What would be kind of cool too is if you wanted to bring a sketchbook out to like the rhododendron garden at Point Defiance and draw what you see, or if you want to take a picture of it with your phone or a camera, it's always nice to have a reference. And I like to try to draw things that I've never drawn before. And when I was growing up, I used to draw roses all the time. And then I got really good at drawing roses, but this is a fairly new thing for me. So it took me a bit of practice. Okay. And we're just going to keep on going. So they're not completely round. Um, they have some texture to them. And you can put as many as you want in your cluster. It just needs to have um, more than a few. So you're not really going to see three of them clustered together. You might see uh, eight or nine or, or seven. Personally, I like odd numbers, so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, the stem part. So I'm going to draw kind of the stick that they're on. It's kind of like two lines and to give it a little bit of texture, I'm going to put kind of broken lines on it. And then we're going to make some more leaves. And the leaves are pretty big, so they're a lot bigger than the flowers. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this leaf where I'm gonna have one line down the center. And there's that asymmetrical word again. It's going to be pretty identical on both sides. So what are some fun flower facts? Um, well, the flowers will often get visitors, not just humans, but bees and um, butterflies. And they collect the pollen, which is in the middle. And that's what they eat. Turn it into things like honey. And so if you see a bee, um, the best thing to do is just to observe it because it's out doing its thing. serving its purpose and although there are a lot of types of bees it's just best to leave them alone and here's a weird factoid i'm 42 years old and i've never once been stung by a bee um probably because i like to watch animals but unless I know that they're safe to touch or play with, I usually just leave them be. Ah. I did. <laughs> that was very serendipitous. Um, I did not mean that, but that works. Okay. And so I think, I think I'm going to make a butterfly kind of hanging out in here. So we have the butterfly's body. And so that's generally black, but it can come in all sorts of colors. And the, the one thing about butterflies is that if you touch their wings, they have really fine powder on their wings. And if you touch them, they, they kind of lose the ability to fly. So, so if a um, butterfly has already passed away and it's laying on the ground, um, being able to observe it and 
and pick it up is very different than if it's alive and it needs to be able to to fly around okay so i need to draw little antennas and some wings and we're going to make kind of a cool design and you can make your um, butterfly wings look any way you want to. I'm just going to go kind of simple with mine. I'm going to give it kind of a black edging. Sometimes you'll see um, bugs that have patterns that kind of look like eyeballs. And uh, that's a defense mechanism. So that the thing that's hunting them thinks that something is looking at them. Um, but it's actually just the pattern of the insect. And I think that that's, that's pretty cool. That's a neat adaptation to have. Okay. And so. Miss Teresa, my mom used to say I had that she had eyes in the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> I can so, see how that could be useful, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to make um, some petals facing this way. So we're going to give them a different kind of texture than the pet petals that are facing this way. And I'm going to make kind of lines going across. And that makes your picture have um, an interesting feel to it, a little more depth and layering. I really like flowers. I think it's really nice when people send them. And uh, there's all sorts of shows. Like if you're a gardener, you can, uh, if you're a person who cultivates um, flowers. There's shows that you can compete to judge on who has the best. And I think that's kind of neat too, because that takes a lot of skill that um, I don't have. Uh, something I guess I could learn. But I like succulents, which is another type of plant because you just uh, give them water and then they do their own thing. Uh, one of my favorite flowers is actually an orchid. And orchids are kind of neat because they'll often have uh, multiple petals like this, but they're on a longer stem. But if you water them too much, um, they die pretty easily. So you only need to give them one or two ice cubes a week, and then that's enough water to keep them alive. Did you know that, Mr. Kevin? <laughs> Because I usually end up overwatering everything and killing it, so it's hard. I, I'm what you would call a person with two brown thumbs. Oh, instead of a green thumb? That's right. Okay. All right. So um, if you want to draw other kind of insects that might want to visit this uh, rhododendron, that's really cool. I I kind of like this for our state, um, although we have lots of indigenous plants. We also have plants that were um, brought over from other places, like the cherry blossom tree from Japan. And they are all over the place. Um, and they're pretty sizable. Um, but the ones in Japan are much, much bigger because they're older. And they're one of my favorite flowers. They, they don't bloom for very long. But when they, um, but this time of year, it starts to snow cherry blossom petals. And I just think that that's really, really pretty. Okay, so if you want to draw some bees, that's cool too. If you want to draw multiple butterflies, that's pretty neat. In fact, I think I'm going to draw another butterfly going here. Yeah, he needs a little friend. He does. So what should we name them? Hmm. Let's see, since they're butterflies, I'm going to name them after butter brands. <laughs> so how about one will be Carrie and... Mm, Dairy Gold? Carrie Gold. And how about the other one will be... I can't believe it's not butter. So, <laughs> so those are going to be my two names today. Alrighty, so here's my drawing. And this is kind of the simplified version. And if you want to 
if you want to go more elaborate, you're making more realistic details, um, I suggest getting an image of a flower um, that's a technical drawing and then just try to copy it. Because what I did was I downloaded this one and then I drew my own version of this one. And it gave me different ways that they were facing and the different textures. And I just thought that was kind of cool. And I found all of these images um, online using our computers. So, OK. Oh, another thing that I found was this image here. And it has a lot of grayscaling, which means that it's not black or white, but there's a lot of different textures going on in here. And so I decided that it would be kind of cool to color over parts of it. Um, I used the same color green here, but since this part of the drawing was already darker, it give, gave it a bit of depth. And this one had like two different tones inside the petal. And um, here's my little butterflies. And so uh, the original drawing that I saw um, online, it was also yellow. And here's a little bee. It's in there. So that's another project you can do if you don't want to draw the picture. You can just um, take an already existing picture and print it in black and white and then color over it. And so I brought my color pencils. So I'm going to make the inside our yellow and then I'm going to make mine kind of pinkish because um, that's what I saw. Kind of pinkish purple. And I'm going to be making mine realistic. So I'm going to be making my leaves have green leaves. Now, if you want to, you can actually use two different shades of the same color to give it a more interesting look. Or if you want to use watercolors, um, if you're using watercolors, just make sure that the pen that you're using will have um, won't run. So you're not getting smudges of black. And another thing that you can do is if you want to use watercolors, you can actually kind of paint them first and then get the general shape and then use a black marker after it's already dried and draw over that. And that looks really cool too. I like watercolors. We'll have to do that sometime soon. Okay, so I wanna make sure that I get all the parts of my flower. So some of the research that I was doing for this particular drawing showed all the parts of the plant, which would be a really cool addition um, to your art. I don't think I've ever gone up to this particular plant to smell it, so I'm not sure if it has a floral smell. Does anybody know if it does? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they make perfumes out of plant extracts. Hmm. I like the smell of roses. They're pretty strong though. Okay, one leaf to go. And it's okay if your pictures don't look like mine. I've been drawing for four decades um, and lots and lots and lots of practice, but there are a lot of things I don't know how to draw at all. And I need to practice those things, but I look forward to trying new and different things because you're never too old to learn. Okay, 
So I want to make my butterflies yellow. So I'm still going to give them black tips because that's what my reference drawing looked like. So I took an idea and then I made it my own. And when we did the picture of the bear, I did the same thing. So I made it similar, but a little bit different. I forgot to make the black tipping on the butterflies. A long time ago, um, I used to teach preschool and we grew butterflies in the classroom and they went from caterpillar to chrysalis inside their cocoon and then they became butterflies. And so that word is called metamorphosis. So it went from one thing to change into its adult form to look completely different than what it originally did. And um, I thought that that was pretty cool. We then released those butterflies into our garden that we had been um, growing for that season. So it continued that life cycle. I like butterflies. Some of the insects that you might see in a garden are like dragonflies. And they've actually been around since prehistoric times. And they used to be much, much bigger than they are now. Maybe one day we can do uh, drawings about dinosaur stuff and I'll bring in some of my dinosaur stuff. During my summers, I like to go on adventures with my family and uh, sometimes we'll go to places where you can dig for dinosaur fossils. And I think that that's kind of neat. So, okay. So what I'm gonna do is, since I have a bunch of little circles, I'm just gonna kind of color over them. So you don't have to color each and every dot. And you can make it whatever color you want to. Flowers come in all sorts of shades. And if you haven't had a chance to go to Point Defiance, um, Five Mile Drive is really nice. It's right next to the zoo. And there's a couple playgrounds out there too. And hiking trails. So Miss Teresa might do that this weekend where I go check out the rhododendron garden out there. Maybe take some pictures. Another area where they have flowers um, about this time of year, they might still actually be blooming, is the Rose Garden. And there's a fun story behind that. So there are so many different kinds of roses there because um, the community donated uh, from their own gardens to make kind of a big garden where everybody can go to. And so the varieties of plants um, range in different colors and sizes and textures and um, it's it's really really pretty to see they even have an archway that has uh, flowers um, that will grow across from them or across them and it's also right next to the pagoda which used to be the old uh, trolley station Tacoma's pretty neat. We have a lot of uh, history here. And you can go down by the waterfront, see some tide pools. I like to either go, um, Miss Teresa doesn't really run anymore, so I like to walk uh, really, really fast or ride my bike around that area with my kiddos. So I'm going to keep on coloring. Do you have any questions, Mr. Kevin? Not a question, but I do have a comment. Okay. We have a rhododendron 
in our backyard. Do you? What color and is it? It is a, a deep purple flower with with a lighter purple on the inside part of the of the the uh, petals. That sounds really pretty. They're beautiful. And there's all kinds of different rhododendrons. There's light blue ones, there's purple, there's there's uh, violet, all kinds of colors. I think that it would be really pretty to take a, a little bit of all of those colors and put them in a vase together. And uh, today I deliberately wore one of my flower shirts. And so I'm almost done with my coloring. But I would very much like to see your art. So if you could please either email it or mail it to us. Or what was that um, portal that you guys were talking about before that the kiddos can use? Flipgrid. 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 OK, so if you want to import it into or attach it to Flipgrid, and then do they send it to us? Okay, so they can upload a picture or video and then um, send it to the following email address. Cool beans. Nice. Oh, <laughs> I would very much love to see um, the art that you're creating out there. And um, any way you can get it to us, either by email or Flipgrid or uh, by physical mail, that would be wonderful. And we'll even showcase it on the next show. Okay. And they can also send it to TV Classroom at tacoma.k12.wa.us. Or you can mail it to the TV Classroom at 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington. 98405. So one of the things that when I was a kid and I used to send art pieces into stuff um, that I was worried about was, would I get my art thing back? Um, or was it kind of on display forever? You can make copies of your drawings um, before you send them to us. Or you could have somebody uh, help you take a picture and also send it to us if you want to be able to keep the original. Um, we also have lots of kids' art here at the Central Administration Building um, in our hallways, and we get lots and lots and lots of compliments on them from our visitors. So however you want to send it in, it works for us. So I am pretty much done with my drawing for the day, with my butterflies. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign my name at the bottom. And I'm going to draw a little flower next to my name. OK, so that was a lot of fun. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.
seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, you will get bonus points if you find Maui's hook. Five, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Six, use your math skills to see how many points you can get. Good luck. Thank you.